Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about using quills for bodies. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about Polish quills, these things here, which is just a peacock curl stripped. And But I've got a few questions lately, and a lot of people think these are synthetic. They are not. They're, they're an actual, they're just a, a peacock curl stripped. But the beauty of these things is, is they're dyed. And so when you do a peacock curl, it's one color. With these, you're gonna get dyed colors. Uh, they're, kind of, they're kind of shades more than they are color. They're kind of just a, a hue, which is really cool. This one here, you don't get the really bright colors with this stuff so much, but you get a, you get a nice, you know, you get a contrast more than just the regular. And so they're really nice. But like I said, a lot of people thought these were uh, synthetics. A guy told me he tried to stretch one and it didn't work. No, it's pretty, they're pretty fragile. But anyway, I'm gonna, I'm kind of in the process. I'm tying up a handful of flies for myself. And so I thought it'd be a good time to redeem myself and tie that red quill I did a year ago, which sucked. And it, I'm gonna fix it and show you how to do it right. Cause I hadn't tied one in probably 20 years when I did it. But that, when this fly, uh, and, and I told this before about it, is that when we've got, when you've got really techy fish and things are, and you're doing your techiest bestest to do what's right and they're not eating it, this fly, for, it's a cat scale style. And a cat scale means that it's got, uh, the body is kind of unique to that, but it's the style, the longer tail, longer hackle, the wings are tube. everything's a little bigger than what, you know, than normal, for t especially by today's standards. They're the most elegant, beautiful looking flies there are, but uh, they're not really as exacting. And for some reason, when things are tough, I'll throw one of these things on and they just climb on it. And I, I don't know why. But I do fish this particular fly in this size and a size bigger when there's a lot of small crane flies around. And if, you know, if you've ever seen a crane fly in the water, they, they just flutter all over the place, right? And so you take this fly and it's got the right body shape, you know, everything. Like that. But it's mostly it's just it's fluttering on the surface. And you, you, you just kind of twitch them around and man, they just climb on these things. And again, the thing about this is the hackle's too long, the tail's too long. And when you take it out of the vise, when you sit it there so you can see it, it, the hook doesn't really sit on the water. And so it's just, it's up, right? It's really too far up in the air. And we've kind of lost track. And I'll tell you, I, when I first started fishing, that fly was really, it was the industry standard back in, you know, 30, 40 years ago. And so, and it caught tons of fish. So I want to, but basically we're going to talk about quills and setting your wings. So. Uh, I'm gonna, in a, in a couple ways to prep these things, because there, there's, there's disadvantages to them too. But I wanna also show you, because I was talking about, better put him back in here, just to show you, I wanna show you a contrast, or a comparison, I mean. The also, the thing you'll see is that, this is the span, uh, this is a quill body, in either like a bullet or a pertagon. Pertagons are synthetics, generally speaking. But this is a, this is a quill body also. The difference is, you can see how shiny it is. It's just been coated with a UV resin. So it's, it, they're indestructible, they sink super fast, but you can see it's a natural quill body. So it's, it's the same thing, whether you're gonna use that, or you're gonna use, you know, for a nymph, or you're gonna use it for a, a dry fly, whatever you're gonna use it for. It's the same thing. But back to what I was saying, uh, I'm gonna use a size, this is just a standard 12 hook. Uh, it's kind of big. But I'll do these, actually I've done them up to eights. That, uh, it's right there, you know, where it's really, uh, for the crane flies when you're really trying to skate one. So, but this is gonna be pretty good for generic, just so you can see everything. And so I'm gonna run uh, some Semperfly 12 watt thread here. Um, I like to take, when I'm working with quills, I like to match the body to the thread and that's a thing from the old days and that when we didn't have as much of the colored threads and we didn't have, you know, two sizes. And I like to have the body, if I can, to kind of match the thread, partly so if I make a mistake, it doesn't show up so much. I think that's why I did it in the old days. But anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna set this thread and I want you to see, I'm gonna wax that real quick so it doesn't slide all over. I want you to see where I set this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set the first turn and I'm gonna have a, just enough so I've got about three turns worth of head. So I've got a, a gap here, there's no thread. So I'm, that's where I'm gonna end. 
and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to break this into basically uh, the first quarter of the hook and I'm going to stop my thread right there and that's where I'm going to set this wing and so basically what you're going to end up trying to do when you tie this fly is you're going to try to have about the same amount of turns ideally you'd have identical whatever four in the back four in the front so I need room to put that wing in and then I'm just going to cut this off come back so that's set nice and now we're going to go, oops, we're going to go, we'll cover that up in a second. We're going to set these wings. And I want to show you something about setting these wings. And, you know, generally speaking, a lot of people in the old days, they all wanted to use wood duck. Wood duck's beautiful. It's got that nice little golden sheen to it. And then wood duck gets really hard to come by. And if you don't, you know, if you don't have a source for it, it's virtually impossible to get. And then along comes mallard flank dyed. And so, and I, and I talk about this in other videos about how the mallard flank is it's totally accessible. It's dyed in any color you want. You can dye your own. And most of what we call flank is really just the belly feathers. And there's not much, because there's been so much use with it in streamers and uh, bigger wet flies that kind of lost this Catskill style wing. But they're beautiful wings, and I want you to see how to use them. So the first thing, I'm going to show you something. A lot of times, like this one here, this is two of the same color. A lot of times I'll run a double set of these right together, right? And so I'm going to show you just something, just a fun little deal. I'm going to set these things right beside each other. And you see I've got two different colors. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all this crap off the bottom of it. So now I've got two sets. I've got two, and yeah, it's real simple. You just match up two of the same if you want to do this. It's just... It's just a two-tone wing. You could do a little, you know, darker leading edge. Like if you do a calabatus, if you take a, uh, the back, if you reverse it, calabatus got a leading edge on it. It really doesn't make it look like there's something that's, it's fun to do. It just gives you a two-tone effect. And so you take that feather like this and you match them up and you get them about the same length, like just so they're, they're set nicely. Okay. And then you're going to take the feather. Here's one I've already done. Whoops and right here i'm going to work with these so you can see the two-tone and so a lot of people I, I used to you'd see them go in here and they would you've got both feathers side by side and you'd see them take their hackle pliers and grab that i just i've always preferred just to reach in and hey, come back here drop that one i'd rather just reach in and grab the two of them and i can see the ends of them are the same length so that's what i'm concerned with right here this is the same length and I get the tip of both feathers and I separate them. Okay, so down they come. So there's there's the just the tip of the two feathers, and you start kind of looking at this at the feathers here, and you can see if they're the same length. Now this mallard in the back is a lot just a little bit longer than the, the brown. But I'm gonna use this part in here. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the wood duck just because it's this fly is so pretty, but uh, and I like to use it. <laughs> And, but anyway, you can see that. Now you're going to take your feather and you cut the tip of that up, all right? And now you can kind of, if you're frugal, you could get two sets of wings out of this. I'm going to set a single set, and I pull it right out of the way so I can see it. And I match these up, and there. And so what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do that with this other one. I'll turn that around, and I'll set those and pull them, and I get a match set. And I've got a two-tone on it. Just fun. It doesn't, you know, if you never did that the rest of your life, it wouldn't be a big deal. It's just, it's fun. So here I'm going to do the same thing. Now, and the thing about the wood duck, the reason that, you know, I think a lot of people gravitated towards the mallard is it's thicker. Especially if you're doing a single set. If you did, if you did one wing with this wood duck, it's really, really wispy. There's just not much to it. And so the mallard's a little thicker and you get... I don't know what I did with that wing, but it, it, you just get more of it. But I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab the tip of this feather. I'm just going to stroke the, the feathers back so I get equal on both sides. Just hold both tips in your hand right there. And just work it to the side. Cut that off. And now just get it. Now on this one, because I have I have limited, Jeremy won't shoot me any wood ducks, just because we don't have many. Uh, 
he would if he could. And so I'm gonna, I would normally save that, right? That one's a little bit thicker on this side, just to keep it even. We're just gonna, we're gonna get them pretty clean like that. Now I got two feathers in here. I'm gonna set this right on top of the thread, right on top of the hook. And again, remember that you're going to, you're going to have a little bit longer hackle than normal, a little bit longer wing. So I'm gonna move forward and I'm gonna stand this up. I'm gonna take a look before I do anything. And you'll notice when you stand those up, they pretty much separate for themselves. All right, I don't like that set. I'm a little bit further forward than I wanna be. I'm gonna come back, I'm just gonna, I'm just a little bit there. I can, I can get two turns, three turns right there in front. That's about where I want it. And you can see how sparse this wing is anyway. It's not like gonna, but it's tall. Right? And so if it was too short, too tall, just pull it. Just hold the feather, keep your wings set, pull it back, how long you want. It's just a slow, just that's how long, you know, you're just kind of, you can guess, you can take your hackle and put it up there. I know basically how long you want it. And so then with, get it, you know, you're nice and set. There's your hack, your wings are set because you've already split them. Now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna start nice even wraps back this is where I screwed up when I did my last one. I forgot, so hadn't done one in so long. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to cut the top one of these. I don't know which one it is. We're losing those and going to the high powers. So I'm going to come in here and grab that top one. I'm going to cut it off first. I'm going to come back. I'm going to go a little bit over that. And I'm going to cut that off. And what you see I've done is I've already set a taper to my wing, or to my body. And so it's, it's already there, it's, there's no bump. And that's the big thing when you work with these, is that you don't wanna have a hump and a bump right there, you just wanna nice and clean. And we're gonna stand that up with our thread just a little bit when we get back up here. I'm gonna leave that wing forward as it is right now. Come back, and I'm gonna go right to the gouge right there so my thread's hanging down, and I'm gonna grab, uh, I'm gonna use Coq de Leon on this. And just because, I mean, when you look at this, to me, this is one of the most beautiful feathers on the planet. It's already barred. It's, it's just really sexy feather. And it's, it's, it's made for tailing. It's got the little barbs. I mean, you can see it's just like, it's got the little bars in it already. It's just really cool looking. And it's, it's nice and stiff. It's a great tail for supporting these things. And again, this fly is going to stand up. You saw when I had that one sitting here on the bench that it just stood up on the ends of the tails. And so if you're going to do anything air on your heavier on the tail, you can always cut that off. If you're looking at it and you just don't like it, you can always go take it off. But if you've got a sparse tail, it won't hold it up and it'll, just, it'll sink. It. It'll go butt first in. And so I want this tail to be the length of the hook minimum. When I do my bigger crane flies, I do them sometimes uh, one and a half times because it has nothing, I want it to skate and the more flotation it gets, the better. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna measure this, the length of the hook from the eye to there. I'm gonna transfer that, do a pinch wrap so that it sits there when I set it. And now before I do anything else, don't, don't rush. Look at that. So you, you moved your, your, you went to your transfer, you did your pinch wrap, and now you're looking at it. Get two turns on it and just take a look. And, and don't, don't, look at that. There's the rest of that feather. Don't, if you don't like it, move it. Just, you know, loosen your thread a little bit and move it. So I've got two turns. That's nice. It's nice and long. There's my third turn. Now, on to the quills. So that's set. We're not really. I, I'm going to set, I have, I've only got three turns. I got my pinch, my set, my anchor. And so, you know, I did a kind of a basic little figure eight. So now you got your quill. And there's a couple things. First, I want to show you how to make your own. And so the quill is just this right here. It's just a peacock stem or a pearl. And you're just going to take this to do it. I, I've always done it like this. I just put it in my hand and I just put my thumbnail, trying to get where you can see it and strip all this stuff off, right? It's just, don't reef on it. Give it a two or three turns, just like that. Turn it around and just get it nice and clean. If you look at this 
And I've seen people do, uh, uh, saw an article once where somebody did it with a eraser. I mean, to pick up a tool, it's so easy just to go like this. They say just to put it down and hit it with the eraser, it takes it off. Well, it takes it off with your thumbnail too. And so if you look at that, there's your clean quill. And if you look at the real, the ones you buy, there's the hurl at the top and there's your stem. Okay, and so this is nice and clean right now. But they're kind of, you know, they're kind of brittle. And if you've got old hurl or something that's not quite fresh, it doesn't hurt. What we used to do back in the Stone Age, when I was a kid, we had back, you still had gut leaders running around the world. Not really, nobody was using them, but they had these little felt uh, things you'd soak them in. And so we would put these things in between two pieces of felt. Do the same thing right here. I've got some in this thing, in this, tub that Tom, this cup that Tom made me for, it's a little sponge you can just leave. It's got, it's really cool. He Velcroed it. And then I put these in here, hmm, I think a week, I was going to shoot this a week ago. I put them in here and I was wondering if, if I soaked them, how much of that dye would go out. And you can see virtually nothing. I didn't lose any. There's not like any big stains in there. But what this does, even if you take a warm paper towel like this, and you know you're going to tie a handful of them, just set it in there and let it, let it absorb some of that. And so it'll take a little of that brittleness out. If, you, if it's not bothering it, it's, it doesn't bother you. But if, it, if they're cracking, Jeremy is telling me how he's wrapping some, doing quills. I've got marabou going all over. And he, it would, they would crack on him. Well, this will help, right? So I'm going to take this, this one here. I'm just going to work with this one that's fresh to see what happens. And if it cracks, I'll, it'll be a perfect example. I should have soaked it. And then when you look at these quills, there's two edges. There's the lead, what I call the leading edge. I don't know if that's a proper term or not. Somebody will correct me, I'm sure. But there's a dark side and a light side. And it's just, when you get used to it, and it's, for me, I like the, the, the dark side down. I like, and it leads the edge when I go forward, and it's just how I like it. If you do it the other way, it's just gonna have, it's gonna be on the other side. It doesn't really matter. It's just, you kind of get used to doing things, I do at least, in the same, so it's always the same. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna cut this end off, because it's really thin, and I'm looking at that, and you can see how thin it is, so it's gonna start, and I'm gonna come underneath, I'm gonna, and I talk about a pinch wrap and a trap wrap. This is a trap wrap. I just go underneath and I got a light turn and I hold it, you know, if it stays under like that, that's fine. If it comes around, that's fine too. I'm not gonna crank on this. I leave, a, I leave about four turns worth of that so I can just come forward and you're gonna practice your thread control right now and you're gonna come forward and you're gonna watch this. Here's my hackle stems right on top. And they're coming around to the front. I'm going to get this out of here. Let me do that before I get it. Come back to me. So there's this. Here's the stems right here. The butt stems. I'm going to take that so they lay right behind my wing. Kind of messed with my wing a little bit. I'm backing up because I didn't have nice tight there. I'm going to take those right to the base of the wing. And you can see now that there's just absolutely, it's smooth. When I wrap that quill, it's going to build up and I'm going to have this tiny little tapered body and everything, like I've said a million times in these things, everything's tapers. Everything's a taper and fly time. And so the better you get at that, the better you'll fly. So. And I think I missed a little of that right there. It's bad being blind. Boop, there. So, so that, so what you did is you just, I just used the, get you over there. The wings are still nice and spread out. I just used the materials layered back up and, you know, over top of each other to make sure that I get a nice clean body. And so with no humps, no bumps, I'm going to put a half inch in here so that I can work behind. I can wrap this with my rotary. If you don't have a rotary, you're just going to do it by hand. I love rotary vices. I mean, I'm, you get so used to using a rotary, it's so much smoother. And so I'm going to come around, and I'm going to look for my body, and I'm going to make sure that my first 
turn. Am I blocking you, Jeremy? Nope, you're good. My first turn comes around and just keep it at a nice angle, nice even body. You can see that beautiful. God, there's just nothing prettier than a quill body. I get right there where I'm going to, I'm going to come a little bit forward. That's fine. I'm going to come a little bit forward of where my, what happened here? This thing's fighting me. A little bit forward of where my body, I, better to have it too far forward than too far back, just so that you don't have a gap in your body. So there's the quill just sitting on there. Nice. I'm going to do two turns, three turns over it, pop it off. Now, you can see, if you, if you were doing a quill body for a, a nymph, and you wanted it to be shiny and big and thick like this, and by the way, that's built up by the, the thread, not by the quill. And so if you want that, and if you want, and you want to hit this with varnish, I hit them right now. Like if you wanted to make it basically indestructible, it's not going to add any weight. It's a fast fly. It's a, you know, it's not going to last forever no matter what. And so I'm going to, but you could lacquer it right now. I, I'm not worried about it. That quill seems really nice. And when I was saying it before about soaking these, if you were looking at this right now, it usually only takes about 10 seconds after you finish tying it off and you see it go and it splits. If it's going to split, it usually splits really early. Okay, so now we're going to leave this. The hackles are forward. And now we're going to take, I'm going to use, this is a pretty big, this is a dark bar ginger. And it's pretty big. I'm going to test it. And, and just, you know, I'm going to test this to make sure that the hackle's not too big, not too short. I want it a little, you know, I want it pretty big. So I just took this one and I like, and this is a personal thing. I like my wings to, where's that other one? I like them to stick up above my hackle just a little bit. I, and again, I don't know, there's no rules to this stuff. It, it's just how I saw mine done er, you know, early days when I first started. And whoever I copied, probably Tom Noms or somebody, one of the great tires I knew in the day. And the wing was sticking up, I don't know, you know, maybe a quarter, eighth of an inch above the hackle. I thought that's how it was supposed to, that's how I like mine to look. <laughs> And so how you match them is up to you. So back to this wing. I want to set the, I'm going to just give this a turn between the wings, just one figure eight. I, I don't, it, it's, it was really set perfectly. It, it was going to be fine. Give it a couple right there and work back to this. That's, you don't really need to do that. And this, because this is such a wispy little wing. You'll notice on this one, I used a double set of mallard. You can see it. It's it's not really that critical if you ask me, because it's, I, it's the thing is it's what it's doing on the water more than anything. So I'm going to take this hackle just like always. And I'm going to check, make sure that when I bend it, it doesn't stay like you get up in here when you bend them, they'll stay cracked. This won't. And I'm just going to look it over. And I like this really. I love this dark bar ginger. It's got a kind of a badgery or furnace center. I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to look at the stem. It's a little bit thick right there, a little thicker than I want it. And the thing about a Catskill style fly, and I again, I don't know if it's all of them. I mean, I've seen lots of Darby's flies, people that did tons of them. The hackle was always facing forward. There's a convex side and there's a concave side of your feather. And so the pretty side, the side that when you look at a neck, this is the outside of the neck, right? When you look at this, this is the convex side. When the feather is down like this, sitting on your neck, the, the pretty side is the convex. The other side, if you take this feather, and I'm sure you can see it. I know you can against the, the white. So you can see how this is really pretty. You turn it over, it loses a lot of its color. On the cat skill, I like it to go that way. All right, so instead of tying it in, with the shiny side to your right. And I don't do that on any other style of mayfly when I tie and hackle it. I always do it the other way. On this one, I tie it in underneath. And remember, we're going to try to get pretty close to the same number of wraps, three, four, whatever it is that you do on each side of the wing. So I'm going to cut this. I'm going to tie it in right at the back, right where the body starts. I'm going to hit it with a I come, how I set my hackle is I come underneath it 
and I butt the stem to the thread and then I go on the other side of it and it's a little bit it's a little tricky to get that and I do two in front of it and tighten it down and that just keeps it in it's starting its plane and it keeps it nice and flat and I'm going to work this thread forward so that we have equal turns on both sides so we can get equal turns on both sides and then you can take your hackle pliers I can work I could work with this one no problem because it's such a long it's got such a long feather I'm going to get one turn here convex the the shiny and pretty side of the feathers to my left so there's one full turn there's two there's three I'm going to come in front I might get three I might get four I keep it really tight to the wing right now there's one there's two there's three and you can see how the hackles pushing forward and it's really long and it's it's just it's the style of the it's the cat skill style all right and so it's nice and it's nice and wispy let's see we'll finish this out okay stop that come back here that thing is trying to fight me So you can see that I've got a little bit of a craziness right there. So I'm going to come in right to the eye, come back, make the head. And it's, I, you know, I like to see a little bit of a pronounced head on those. So I'm going to build it up. This is small threads. So it's not going to build much. So I'm going to come in here and, and just whip the head. Boom. And that's all there is to it. So if there's a, and, I, and if you can see, the hackle's pushing forward, right? It's, and so what it does is it pushes the fly up and it makes it easy to dance it around on the surface. And so it's too big, like for a traditional hackle, and you'll see when we lay it down that it's gonna be, it's, it's real wispy. It's gonna, and you'll see the other one. The wings, like I said, and, and I'm not positive about that, this rather or not that the wings were supposed to be a length or not again it's just how i saw them first and so i tied hundreds and hundreds of these as a kid and fished them forever i caught a lot of fish on them but it was just the style that i saw them done first you know how i first saw them done and you can see that the hackles forward so and this fly is designed i mean it, it's got that beautiful elegant little body really light really wisp you can just move it all over the surface. But as you can see, there's not the, the wings are forward. Everything's kind of laid forward for the traditional. When you see them now, they seem to be really lateral, really tight like that. But you can see it's a really skinny little body. Not The wings are pretty sparse. And again, you can double that up and make them thicker. You can see on this one, I doubled them up. I got a two-tone wing on this one. And you can thicken things up as you like. It's just, but the quill is the beauty to this thing because it's just so it's just such a beautiful little body really light hope you liked it hope it helps you out